This short video is about the application of an enzymatic debrider. In this case, it's a collagenase, which breaks down collagen and is important for helping to remove enzymatically necrosis within a wound. Here we have a wound. In this case, it may have been just post-debridement or there may have not been any debridement on it so far whatsoever. Either way, prior to application of the enzymatic debrider, you want to make sure the wound is cleaned with saline and the appropriate protocols and the skin around it is dry and there's no loose debris. At that point, you want to apply the enzymatic debrider within the margins of the wound. Now we're going to apply the enzymatic debridement ointment to the base of the wound. Now the base of the wound could appear fairly clean and have minimal necrosis or there actually could be some residual black necrosis which was not able to be removed at this particular visit due to pain, bleeding, or various other reasons, in which case it's possible to score it, which increases the surface area for the collagenase to work. Either way, the application is such that you apply it within, within the wound, trying to avoid the wound edges, and you generally try to provide a uniform coating of approximately two millimeters thick. After the application of the enzymatic debrider, and you like to make sure that the base is fully covered and that there's not any of the uh, enzymatic debrider on the wound edge and the peri-wound surface of, this, of intact skin because that will contribute to maceration. The dressing that's put on top of this is obviously dependent on the wound. If it's a highly secretive wound, the secretions will activate the enzymes within the ointment in which case you really don't need a very moist dressing. However, if it's a dry wound, a moist dressing is preferred because it will help activate the enzymes within the ointment and increase the efficacy of the, of the treatment. One thing also to make note of is that silver or iodine containing dressings, silver and iodine will inactivate the enzymatic action and should not be used in combination or in conjunction with enzymatic debriders. After the dressing is applied, generally enzymatic debriders are changed once every day. If, however, the wound is highly secretive, you may increase the frequency so that you don't incur maceration on the peri-wound surface. It's not common to decrease the frequency much from Q24 hours. The reason you may use enzymatic debridement as opposed to other forms are many. One is if you have debrided a wound but there's still some residual necrosis, either black biofilm or gray necrosis that's residual, and you'd like to, without mechanically disrupting the base of the wound any further or causing bleeding, uh, have some continuous effect over the next week before you come back for your serial debridement in terms of removing necrotic debris. The second reason post-debridement is that you might have some residual black necrosis, which we mentioned earlier, which you can score, increase the surface area, and allow the collagenase to soften for the next time. This should never be used in place of sharp debridement, as sharp debridement has many other advantages other than simply the removal of necrosis but there are many cases in which this can be used as an adjunct or might be preferable in cases where debridement might be too painful initially, the necrosis is too adherent initially because it's such a chronic wound and other uh, situations similar to that. Mm -hmm.